So back to Ferdinand. Um, this is Rosie's problem, right? No, we, we finished Rosie's problem. This is actually Tina's problem. Okay. Um, hey, recognize pay pay attention, uh, Diane. Well, I recognize it. Hey, I'm halfway oh, there. Oh, you're full of bones. Get out of here. Oh, I wanted to point out, um, this was the last thing that I wanted to show you about. Uh, hey, you know, I, may, I remember that because Samuel Pactor may be my cousin, second cousin. He may, Samuel. or, you know, now this is showing a date of arrival of December 8th, 1913. So I wanted to show you this. This is on, on full three. And this is showing you the results for Samuel Pactor. And if you'll notice down here, we have, this is the microfilm or the film option where you get to scroll through the films. And you can see that they've taken, and this is a nice thing that they've done. They've taken all their available um, or all their identified naturalization papers for an individual and they've grouped them together. So for, um, for Sam Pactor, the only item they have is his um, arrival uh, verification. And I think it's after, yeah, after 1906, people who apply for naturalization, the customs agents, agency will prepare this form that will list the port of entry, the date of their arrival, the name of their ship, and they will send that to the naturalization service. So that's very nice because it tells you exactly where you're gonna find their passenger manifest. Um, you can see for Israel Wolf Ozersky, they have that uh, arrival verification and they have the petition for naturalization there's a multi-step process for getting naturalized first you have to come to the country then you have to be in the country for a couple of years and you file a declaration of intent and you can see Hyman Parker, we have his declaration of intent. And then after about three years, after you file your declaration of intent, then you're able to file your petition for naturalization. So you should find two documents for each person that was naturalized. You should find their declaration of intent and then their later petition for naturalization. So it's odd for Israel Roof, uh, Wolf Ozersky that we have his petition for naturalization, but we don't have a declaration of intent. That means there's a document out there that I would still want to look for. Uh, Where did you find this? Where, how did you, how, uh, can you hear me? You can't hear me. Don't I can you? hear you, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so this is on Where is it? You could just go to fold three? Right, so this is on fold three, where um, you'll remember that we had looked at naturalization documents for New York, Russia, and I picked, um, oh no. So- You know, I, I tried something. Went back. So now you're into the free version through the library, right? Correct. Okay. We're looking at the net. What was Can that? I ask you one question? Sure. Fold, fold three, is that just for military? Not at all. No, no. no. You, were you here last week? I had to leave early. Oh, well. So, you missed it. Me whiz. You're one because at the, end, at the end of fold three, there's a thing that says other or something. Right. So if you no, no. go into the browse and you scroll down, you see non-military records, and okay. that includes all sorts of stuff. Uh, city directories, newspapers, naturalization records, um, homestead records only for Nebraska, 
Uh, so it's definitely not a site to ignore. It's one of the go-to sites for naturalization records. Now, remember, you're, you're, when you type in information, you are guessing what some modern indexer read when they read the document and typed it in. And so if you don't find a document on family searches naturalization collection and you don't find it on ancestries, those are two different indexers. You might still want to look to see if it's available on Fold 3 because it, it might be that different people see things different ways. Um, but Fold 3 is always the one that you want to go to when you're looking for naturalization records. And you just work your way through the columns and down to the point where you've got the actual uh, person's document. You can navigate back and forth with these little arrows here. Um, you can also, at any point from any column, you can do an additional search. That's where you click right here where it says type your search. So if you, if you go back and click on Russia, then we are going to do a search of naturalization records in the New York Eastern. And you can see the path. We're looking through, you know, documents, non-military records, naturalization records, New York Eastern, people from Russia. And now you can add additional information. And you can even add more options to customize your search. And um, so you can then search rather than look through. You may want to do both. Remember, the danger with searching is that the name may be hard to recognize and the indexer may have just gotten it way wrong. So if, if at first you don't succeed with doing a type of name and, and look for it, then you'll want to go back and do the more thorough scan. So in this case, I said I wanted to look for anybody with the surname Packer who... Um, Can you use the asterisks and stuff with this? Yes. Okay. Who, uh, from covering the years 18 to 1900. Um, and so I want to note, I said covering the years 1850 to 1900. That means essentially any date on the document includes that is is within 1850 to 1900 it could be the date of birth the date of marriage the the date of arrival the date of uh filing in the papers so it's it's not specific which birth here all right and so we had a couple of options and i can filter these over here on the left um not as useful. I, I have to admit, I do not like the Fold 3 site for navigating around. It's more work, but when you get to it, it can be invaluable. And so you'll want to... You don't give up first. You can't, you can't <laughs> give up because this is just the way it is. And it sure beats having to go to New York and thumb through a whole bunch of ledgers like our ancestors who are interested in genealogy had to do. So suck it up. Okay. So. Um, Hi. I'm not good. I can get this treatment from my mother-in-law. I don't have to get it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So definitely spend a lot of time exploring Fold 3. It is a clunky website to work on and you're just going to want to figure it out um, with trial and error. It is not like any other website 
that we are familiar with using and um, that's frustrating, but they do have records that you can't get elsewhere. All right, so back to- so Does that mean I need to look for Ethel Cotter there? I, you need to look to, for F, Ethel Cotter there. You need to look- Already for, did. And where, 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 see, else, where else would you look if you, if you didn't go to, if you wanted to find that same guy, where else would he be listed? How do you know he's not listed someplace else? Well, that's what we're going to talk about um, in more, a little bit more detail today, is how to search for people's naturalization records. I, I left my focus in that part of the presentation on ancestry and family search because I like them better. Fold three is just a little harder to work with, but you have to do it. So I, I saved that to the end and I thought, no, let's just move that to the beginning and we'll get, get it over with. And then we'll go back to Ferdinand and family search. Okay, so we have Ferdinand Wortman, who was born around 1838 in Germany. And we know from all of these uh, California great registers, these voting registers, that um, he was living in San Francisco. It looks like he was living at 630 Sacramento, but it got butchered periodically. 603 Sacramento, 636 Sacramento. So that lets you know that what you're looking at what you're looking at is a transcription. Of course, somebody, you know, Ferdinand filled out a form and he turned it in and his name got added to a list and that list got passed around and year by year, um, you know, the, uh, so in, in 1896, the little form he handed in, maybe he was living at 636 Sacramento, or maybe he was still living at 630 Sacramento, but he just wrote the last zero, it like a six. Um, so you all are cognizant of when you are working with a transcription and when you are working with the original document that somebody filled out, when you're working with a transcription, you say, okay, maybe there's some errors in it, but I'm going to get the information that I can. Now, I also found a death index for, Cal uh, for California. I found a result for Ferdinand Wortman on the death index, and I, I wanted to use this as just a sort of learning experience of what to do when you're faced with something you're not sure what the heck this means. I have to interrupt a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. Death index. Where did you? Oh, okay. You got that in family search. Right. Right. Okay. Sorry. So I did. I, I did a search for um, Ferdinand Wortman, a global search. The you know catch everything, and um, and here he is. Uh, for it, so he, it came back as a search result, and so I took a look at it, and I want to understand what I'm looking at. So, okay, this last name, first name, name of the decedent, and then um, I'm betting that that's middle initial, and we have this thing here. I'm not sure what that is, but there's some EBFX, SJ, hmm, I don't know what that is. And now we have age one. Was everybody born in January? Um, so I'm, I'm a little perplexed by this. There's all of these things I can't can quite- get larger so you can read what those columns say? And I tried, I tried enlarging it and, and other things. But there's something easier to do. You see the enlargement didn't help a whole heck of a lot. 
Um, uh, you know, so I, I still want to know what this mm is here, and that and mm, maybe that's the age in years. Okay, so we're faced with a document. We don't know what the column is. To say what uh, the death index form, what are the column headings? So what I do is I go back to the index page for that record. And down here is the link to the collection that this record comes from. I'm going to click on this link and that opens up the search page for that collection. I want to read that article, how to use this collection. Okay, that article and every collection has this. You go to that article and it will tell you what's in the collection. It's arranged alphabetically by the name of the deceased, includes the initials of spouse, social security number if known, code number of county where the death occurred, date of death, registrar number and state file number. The code for the age unit is listed as follows. So if the age has a code one, that's years. If the age has a code two, that's months. If the age has a code three, that's days. If the age has a code four, that's hours. If the age has a code five, that's minutes. So this article is telling me everything that I need to know in order to decode this. All right. Um, here are the county codes. Um, so when you're faced with something that's that you, you don't quite know where this collection came from, who made it, why it was made, what, uh, who provided the information perhaps, you want to go and you want to read the article about the collection and find out what's going on. Well done, Kay. Yeah, wow. Good. Now, back to naturalization. All right, so from the voting registry, we have here his uh, voting registry for, um, I think this was the from 1875. And so here we've got voting number, notes, registration number, uh, voted or not voted. So where did you get the voting record? That is a collection that's available online on uh, Family Search. Again, it's a, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what your state has available until you go and you look at the catalog um, or the, you know, go to the search, uh, go to the catalog or you go to the wiki and you explore what's available for that, for that location. So um, let me ask you a question. If you go to, oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? No. I hear you. You hear me. Okay. I hear you. If, if you go to family search and you're looking for <clears throat> birth certificates, you can look that up by going to search birth certificates. I would go to the wiki and I would look up, say, Pennsylvania births, Pennsylvania birth records, Pennsylvania birth certificates. Okay, but let's say you want to find social security numbers, social security information, deaths. I would go to the wiki. Go to wiki and look it up. And I would look up Social Security Death Index. And if you want to see naturalization. What do you think I'm going to do? Go to the wiki. Right. That's my first place. 
Now is that is that your only place? No. Once I've exhausted the wiki, and I mean exhausted it, then I'll go and I'll look at the catalog for a location, or I'll look at the catalog for a topic. I'll be touching on that a little bit in this search here. So let how me. How specific? How specific can you get with wiki? Can you can you say uh, naturalization coming from Liverpool, England? or you naturalization. Can try it. Hmm? You can try it. You won't know until you try. Um, but I mean, are, is, it, is, is it a box? Is it a browser box or something? that? Right. It's, uh, it's a search box. So when you, are, when you are looking at it, whoops, I don't have... Can okay. you do this with uh, with uh, the other one, Ancestry Wiki or no? Um, Ancestry does not have as a a wiki. Remember, oh. the wiki is is something that was is produced by uh, obsessive compulsive genealogists. That's why the Family Search website is so amazingly valuable because there are so many people who have been contributing to it that the resource is, you know, ancestry can't, can't compete with that level of information. So if, if I were going, if I were starting with something and I wanted to know um, about uh, uh, Liverpool um, passenger records, so I, I would go to the wiki, which is slowly opening. And the difference between that and Google search um, is what? In this, I'll, we'll show you. Let's take a look. So here we are as the wiki. This is what we get. We have a big search bar box. So let's do Liverpool um, passenger records and see what comes up. So it's searching for an article that contains in uh, those words. There isn't a page called Liverpool passenger records. I could create one, and sometimes people do. Um, so we have here uh, emigration. Here's an article about Lancashire emigration and immigration that includes a reference to list of emigrants to America from Liverpool, 1697 to 1707. Uh, here we have Jewish emigration and immigration. That might be worth taking a look at. Um, so you see, these are all articles that have those, those words in them, not perhaps in the same context in which you were, ex you were intending them, but you look through and you see what there is that might be of interest. All right. And so here we have Jewish emigration and immigration. And um, we have a whole article about that. Let's do a control F and search for the word Liverpool. All right, and we have two, two entries. Well, this is bad news. Most of the records for Bremen and Liverpool have been lost. Um, so... <laughs> I, I know a lot of people, a lot of my people came over from there. So you see, yeah. Right, the many Jews. Arrivals so at New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and others are excellent. But, so I don't know whether that's, I guess, I don't know whether there's a record or just a statement that they departed from Liverpool. Well, I guess that's not really a record. And this would be something you would read about, but... Um, what what is happening what what it looks like from what i have seen is that an individual from from germany 
sailed to Liverpool and then got on a different ship. And so you have right. him, uh, you have him getting on a ship to, uh, you know, to the U.S. And so you may have an additional embarkation record, an additional passenger manifest. The, it's saying here that records of departure may provide the uh, ancestor's place of origin, whereas the record of arrival in the U.S. may just list that he, his origin was Hamburg. Well, no, that's where he, he, he sailed from. So if you yeah. can find the embarkation, the record of departure, we're always focused on the records of arrival. If the record of departure is available, there might be information in there that's completely new to us. Um, in, my fam in my searching of records, it seems to me most of the people from Eastern Europe departed from Brennan. And as it says here, most of the records from Brennan and Liverpool okay. have been lost. Now, most, is that, though. Okay, it is does that, not is, say all. Is that arrival or departure or These both? Are the, we're talking about departure records. So the departure records are lost, and I think right. the arrival records have been lost also. Hmm. On that's, Bremen. that's definitely not good. So this is one, this is one article that I would look through. Um, and then uh, going up here, you notice this sidebar for Jewish genealogy research wiki topics. That's this sort of broad category. We're looking at the emigration and immigration. There's also a separate article on Jewish naturalization and citizenship. Um, so you want to, and these are, these are all individual articles. So if you look at this, there is an article on um, naturalization that may have unique information that you don't generally find in the naturalization, the basic naturalization article. So let's um, go to the wiki home and you can do a search by country. You can, let's see, you can also do a search by topic, let's say naturalization. And we've got um, Texas, Kansas, Georgia, Germany naturalization. So every state has a, an article and then we have countries that have articles. Let's go out to the next 500. Well, it's still giving us, repeating anytime it sees that word naturalization. So let's go and look at um, Georgia naturalization. So you see here, it's following, we have this article on naturalization and citizenship under the state of Georgia, within the category of U.S. naturalization and citizenship. So we can read this article. We can step back. Here's the article on Georgia genealogy as a whole. And there are these categories over here. Let's use our back arrow. We can go back to U.S. naturalization and citizenship. And this is giving us an umbrella for um, all US naturalization, website links. It's giving articles about the process before and after 1906. And um, you see all of these edit and edit source. 
that lets you know you're in a wiki. I, I have registered, so I could go in, if I have information, I could simply go in and edit it. Um, so the wiki is made by people who have an interest and people who have become very informed because of their research. And that's something that you don't have at Ancestry. So we've got the wiki. Now, once I've exhausted the wiki, then I would go and look at the catalog. Now here is where I'm, I'm looking at the catalog for the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. And that includes all of their online collections as well. And so you can go in and you can sort, normally we look for a place, uh, New York, and we select it off of the drop down list and we get a bunch of different subjects and we can go and select a particular county in New York and then select a particular town in that county and see records that are unique to that location. But that's not the only way that we can search the catalog. Um, you could even do a search for surnames. What do they have for the surname Stern? And um, so we have a uh, book authored by Elizabeth Gertrude Levin Stern. We have uh, family histories, um, genealogies, and so forth. Let us. What does that mean on the right where it says print list add? Okay. This is, you're going through and you're, you're putting together stuff, a list of stuff you want to look at. And you're saying, okay, I want to look at this and I want to look at this. And um, when we were back here at New York, uh, I want to look at this. So now, an hour or two later, I can sit down and I can say, what are all of these items that I was looking at that I wanted to get a closer look at? Okay, I can, I you're can, gonna have to go back and do that much slower. Okay, all that I've done that is, good. all that I've done is I can, when I see something that I want to keep for future reference, I add it to my print list. Okay. All right, and now I can always review my print list and here it is. Now, if I log out, this disappears. So I can copy it. Well, what about the print? I could print it out, but I don't actually like to print things out. Um, I could print it out as a PDF. Okay. So let's go and do that. Let's go to print. And I'm going to select my printer, save as PDF, and let's save it. And I'll put this on my downloads. And now when I go to my downloads, I have this catalog print list. That step that you just did, saving it when you go to print, because right. I always thought that print was a hard copy on paper, but that print to PDF, I just learned that a couple months ago. Yes. That has been invaluable for anything and everything that I use. Yes. Because I can print it to a, a, a folder on my computer. And the nice thing about it is that it is still word searchable. So I've got this um 
I have this document saved in my downloads folder. I can go into my downloads folder and so let's say I want, I said, I remembered something uh, that Daniel Ronk had written. I want to find that, I can't remember what that book was. So I, I type in his name and it is going to find all documents in that folder that have that word Ronk, R-O-N-K. And so I can quickly find it. So this is, a, this is a handy way to keep track of, let's say, collections that you have already reviewed and you don't want to just keep looking at them over and over again. As you use them, you can keep a record. You could even uh, put this into a Word document or an Excel document and add a column for notes and comments. That's a whole other class. Okay. Um, but let's, let's start thinking about using this uh, print list to keep track of things that we're looking at and just create that PDF, print to PDF. When it opens up here, it will print and you can tell it what you want it to save it as. Your regular printer, you want to save as something with PDF in it. Okay? All right. Now, we've talked about we're always using this to search by place. We saw that you could search by uh, names. You can also search by subject. So let's look for naturalization and see what we have as far as returns. So this is now looking at all of the library holdings that are in the category that includes naturalization. And so they're organized by country and then the uh state and town can you so, change that sort no this is the this is the library of congress designation for um you you know you're familiar with the dewey decimal system mm -hmm. this is the library of congress has set up category designations that all libraries are um, trying to use so it makes it easy for you to find items because you know the organization that it's going to to be under um but can you sort that so you don't have so many because you i don't uh, no. Let's just say for example I don't care about Australia. What you I, can do is you can refine your search. Okay. All right. So you can, um, let's see if we can do a naturalization and Liverpool. Uh, do we mean Liverpool, South Wales? No, we mean the one in Lancashire. All right. So now when we update this, uh, no results found for naturalization in Liverpool, Lancashire. Okay, so you can okay. refine the search that way. We can okay. then go up and I'm looking now at all the results for um, Lancashire, England, not just those results that are narrow to naturalization. Um, so uh, you would have to be Let's try this. So Liverpool did not produce us any results. Let's try with Lancashire naturalization, still no results. Let's try with England naturalization. 
And yes, so we have uh, an article on uh, letters of denization and acts of naturalization from 1749, 1761. We have a non-English article. And, you know, so here we've got a cup, uh, we, we found a couple of items. Um, if we wanted to try um, passenger England, let's see if we can get an update. No. Um, manifest. Nope. So you try to try things out. Let's we've tried subjects. Subjects again is going to be a heading from the Library of Congress. Let's try looking for keywords. Um, passenger. And so England and passenger, we have um, Business records and commerce. Um, I wonder why. Oh, military and mariner mar uh, miscellanea. And there is where the term passenger list comes in. So, keyword is giving us a much deeper search. It's searching through all the notes as well as the name and all of the descriptive information. So again, the only way you're going to really learn to make use of these is by fooling around with them and see what you can find just by doing a little exploring. So Liverpool, England passenger, and we've just got emigration and immigration. Um, this looks interesting, the story of 19th century emigration. Um, so. Is there any, any update to accessing records now that the COVID is in place? Records that we could only access in the center? you're still restricted to finding a family history center that is open in that case i think that the best bet is the west florida genealogy library okay because it's not used much i would i would be hesitant well actually i'm more confident about going to pensacola than i was uh previously I mean, Pensacola is definitely a hot spot, and they're seeing a big surge in hospitalization and intubation and all of that. So that's bad, bad, bad news. But um, the mayor has imposed a mask requirement. So when you go to Sam's Club, for example, everybody's wearing a mask. Good. And I feel better about that. So when you go to the genealogy library in Pensacola, not only are there going to be very few people there, so it's easy to stay away from them, but they'll be wearing masks, as will you. Your mask protects them. You're more interested in their mask protecting you. So, um, so there's no, our, our local center here is still not available to us to view records that are only viewable there. Correct. The, okay. uh, the Latter-day Saints continues to be closed. And uh, that's, you know, so we're out of luck because in Santa Rosa County, the only family history center or affi affiliate are at the churches themselves. In okay. Escambia County, the um, the P West Florida Public Library is an affiliate of the of the Family History Center. So okay. you would be able to get your records through there. Okay, thank you. Now I wanted to point out, and I think I'm going to touch on this a little bit on Ancestry, but I might as well do it while I'm 
while I'm here and talking about this whole thing about searching for stuff. Um, we don't really have a wiki because we don't have obsessive compulsive people voluntarily giving their knowledge to the corporate entity that is ancestry. But we do have their catalog. And so you want to explore the catalog for the categories and the areas that you're interested in. And you can filter by category and by location and by date. So if we want to look at immigration and emigration records, we have here 200, uh, 529 collections. The default is to show those as sorted by date added. You can sort them by, I like to sort by record count so that I can see the most useful collections, the biggest collections. You can narrow down to particular topics, ship pictures, um, citizenship records, immigration and emigration books, what are those? Uh, let's narrow that down by the United States. And um, let's see if we've got anything for, we have 60 for New York. And so we've got here, essentially it's looking like these, uh, this category of books is published indexes that have been digitized. So it, it looks like uh, that's what they mean by books. Well, that's, that's interesting. So, um, and then you can just X out, well, we aren't, aren't gonna keep that. Um, let's look at uh, citizenship records. So again, the same item is showing up. Um, let us see what else we've got. Um, ship and port pictures. Now this might be fun to look through and see if you can find, we have almost 3 million uh, ship and port images. So it might be fine to, fun to find that picture of the ship that your family came on. And that's only a 40 year period. Um, true, but your ship may have sailed in that 40 year period and continued sailing after that 40 year period. Oh, so look at the, Google your ship, find out the history of your ship, and it may be that it may port in New York and it's worth looking at, okay? All right, so that's a couple of things you want to do. You want to explore the wiki, you want to explore the catalog, and you want to explore the catalog on Ancestry. Uh, if you go back to the screen, it said New York uh, ships. Right. Uh, where, where would you put in the ship? For example, it asks for a name. Is that okay. the name? Is that the name of the ship or the name of the, right there? Where I would, oh. right here, oh, ship name. Right there. I didn't, you right. Didn't, you can search for a person, but I don't think. Um, no, no. So like let's, let's do a search the, for the Rotterdam. Well, I'll search for the Caledonia. Okay, let's see how many of those there are. <coughs> Would there be uh, more than one? Oh, probably. Really? Yeah. Okay, or, or none. All right, give me another name of a, of a ship. Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Okay. All right, so we're not having any luck with that. Let's go back. You and, know why? You know why you're uh, in the wrong port. I'm sorry. You should be in. If you had the Philadelphia port, 
Okay, let's see what's in this collection. We're looking at ship images. Let's look at a year. Let's look at 1891. Let's see what we're actually. Okay, so here's the Eider. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so it is actual ship images of um, ships based on a particular date. So this is the Eider as of November 1891. <coughs> so you would want to go to <coughs> the, um, let's see. I've got this big bar in my way. Okay. So let's go um, USS Eider. And we don't want the mine sweeper. We so, Kay, you can upload that into memories? Yes. You can okay. save that to your. Uh, you can save that to your computer and then upload it to memories. So I did it. Also, too, if you have a My Heritage thing and the picture's not that great, you can clean it up at My Heritage. Right. <laughs> hey, Diane, do you, are you getting a commission? Yeah. No, I used it a couple of times. And if some of the faces didn't turn out really good, but some of the photos really did. That was last week. I was paying attention. I'm okay. just saying. I'm just. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. I under investigation. Well, <laughs> actually, if your if your family sailed on the Eider, um, you would not have much luck because it wrecked in January of 1892. So, um, and it's surprising that they don't have a picture of it on on Wiki. Didn't you just show us a picture? Yes, so I am surprised that that wiki has not a, attached that picture. So here it is in 1891, and the next year it was gone. Um, so it's um, we do know we do know that it has these. Uh, we do know that it has these images um okay. but it's only for new york ships uh and that were photographed in new york between the in this 40-year period but consider you, that it may have it may have been uh photographed you have you haven't explored other ports have you like baltimore or um i'm not sure let's see uh so here we are looking at the category immigration and travel you notice that down and see if there's a, right. a place for the ship name so here i was at new york ship images i can go here and i can navigate back or upstream and so here's the wider category and now i can look at ship pictures and descriptions and um that let's see no, no, down the bottom it says featured oh, data. Let's the collection information. So the records are in New York. So it's just a collection of New York ship images. It's not of any other port. It's just a collection from New York. That's but unusual. Again, Why would it exclude all the other ports? It just happens that that's where the uh, collection came from. New York may have made a, made a, made a point of photographing these ships. Um, now we've got the ship pictures and descriptions. We've got featured data collections. When I look at the, what is this? Passenger ships and images. Description of it. Okay, so this is part of that collection that we were yeah. looking at here. It's the New York 
it's the New York ship, uh, port ship images. Um, so be, be glad with what we've got. Um, no, no, I'm not glad. I know, I know. Um, Especially Jamaica, for example, in Jamaica, for Diane's sake, every, I mean, you had to get there by boat. Right. So Again, you, you got to think about how these, how, how a collection comes to be online. First off, somebody has to be photographing the collection. Um, so in this case, somebody has to be taking a pic pictures of ships in a port. Um, in yeah. Jamaica, that may not be, be happening. They may not, you know, customs may not be interest, interested in having pictures of the ports, so they may not have hired a professional photographer to work on staff to take pictures of all, every ship that, you know, came into the port. Well, let's that say you wanted, a, to, you wanted the Kingston Port of Debarkation, or embarkation kingston right. jamaica how would you find that what would is you it find ships you, what is it you want from there i want to know the ships that transited kingston what i did is i i first started out with google and i found some ships like uh let's say for example my grandmother's immigration it gives you the name of the ship on her right. immigration papers so i researched that ship and found out that a ship doesn't necessarily do a you know one to one from Jamaica to New York. That it went through Panama, it went through Cuba, it went through Puerto Rico. It had all these different other ports, which was important to me because I found out how it traveled and how it picked up passengers. So just because a person says it came from Jamaica, doesn't necessarily mean it didn't start in uh, Bolivia or something like that. I did I, research I on those ships. Now, looking at Steve Morse. Oh, he, well, he's got Philly and Boston. And Boston. Right. He doesn't have, does he have Baltimore? Yeah. One up. One up, it would be right before Boston right. would we be. Have, yeah. We have um, Baltimore. Ship lists. Um, yeah, now, okay. Again, okay. remember first off, somebody has to make the record, then somebody has to preserve the record. Then somebody has to microfilm it, and then somebody has to digitize that microfilm and put it online. And so that tends to happen first with places that are big and rich. Um, so if we go down to Philadelphia ship lists, and what was the name of a ship that entered Philadelphia? Uh, Rotterdam. I think Rotterdam was one of them, I think. All right, let's see if we... Um... You're in... Okay. Okay. So now why does that say Ancestry and then Steve Morse? Steve Morse is just a way to search other people's collections. He doesn't actually have records. His, his shtick is to have better ways of searching. So um, sometimes it, it works. So let's see what he's able to give us. Uh, not much there. So Ancestry refused to connect. Okay, so I'm having problems here. Ooh, it's possible that Ancestry is now, I don't know if this is true for what Steve Morse is doing, but some of the tools that I use for my adoption research, Ancestry has sent cease and desist orders to these um, database search tools say, no, you're not allowed to use our database. And I, am, I hope that that is not the case with Steve Morse, because that would be a big 
loss. So we will definitely need to explore that. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting us see these collections. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something to look into. Uh, but I think that Diane's got a good point. I would just go to SS Rotterdam and let's do some, some searching and then write off, go to images. Um, if we have a, a time period, do you have a time period when they would have sailed? Because there's a lot of Rotterdams. 1905. Okay. So, 1905, okay. So here we've got SS Rotterdam at Holland America Line that's being sold on eBay. Um, let us see what- What's being sold is. on eBay? The photo? Oh, yes, oh. for eight bucks. And, um, So this is photo of SS Rotterdam in Hoboken, New Jersey in 1905. Um, if you want that picture for $8, it's yours. Try right-clicking and downloading it. Yeah, but you, you notice it will say this text will... That, is, that watermark will appear on the text. So? Right. You could go in and actually clean it up. Yeah. So, you know. They but, use heritage. Diane could use heritage and clean it up and we'd never know. Well, it won't it won't take out white stuff. I'd be selling it for ten bucks. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a deal. What a deal. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh start with the with Jeez, Google. My my brain is saturated, man. I, I'll never remember all this crap. Where's my hand out? Ah, start with Google. Yeah. We had a teacher that had so impressed me with Google. I know, you know, that that I our teacher, I have, I have to admit, she really knows. To bring in the Dewey Decimal System is certainly amazing. <laughs> that, that lady is smart. I don't know. It's amazing that she lives in Navarre. Hey, look, when I was, when must I was be younger, lost. one of my favorite books was this little thing called Finding Facts Fast. I loved that. Yeah. Is that still? You, no, I'm not going to get it. that little college. baby cover to cover. It was a great little book. And then, you know, you've got that whole, um, well, I used, to, I used to like reading uh, books like that. So here... Here you get me today, and and suffer it as as Boy, we are, we are. You know. no extra You're charge, Ian. Right. right. Well, so, um, well, I'd pay twice as much as I'm paying now if you All only right, get yeah. handouts, right? <laughs> right. So, just um, you know, Google really is your your best friend, and and that when you're talking about something generic. Hold on, dog wants to go out. Dog wants to go out. Yes. Like I said earlier, that's how I started. And I just started researching the ships and found right. out a lot of information. On and Google. Found, by, yes, just by Google. And I yeah, do what how I did call you find a wide loop. How did you, you said you found all the ports, the different ports that it, the ship traveled through. How yes. did you find that on Google? It, you just go and you start reading some of these articles. And it will go, okay, you've got the Rotterdam list of ships, whatever, and you just start reading some of those articles and it tells you. Okay, so here we have um, the SS Rotterdam from 1897. There's an article, of, that's not it. The SS, oh, it was later the CF Teitgen Dwinsk. Um, so, Launched 1897, maiden voyage, uh, final, okay. She sailed from Rotterdam to Boulogne to New York. The ship began its final voyage. So 
you're seeing the whole history of where the ship was. Um, it was used for the filming of the movie Atlantis. Um, let's see. And then check, of course, the references. Uh, ship descriptions. There's the ship list. What does that show? This was also helpful when I did my grandfather, who was a Navy guy. He had a list of the ships that he was on, and I was able to find out the history when the ship was commissioned, when it was decommissioned. Some of them were blown up, some of them were sunk, and I got to put a timeline together of my grandfather's life on these ships. It was really rather interesting. Um, now you notice that this is an article that is using the Wayback Machine. So even though this website, theshiplist.com is now defunct, yeah. we're never going to lose this data that it had collected for us. So, um, I'm wondering, I, I would do a little bit of, it looks actually like this ship did a standard route that, um, and I, I would have to do a little bit more research, but it looks like the route was Rotterdam to New York and it just went back and forth. Yeah, you're right, you're right. It, it did go to New York. Okay. I thought it went to Philly, but it went to New York. And it also looked like it tra it changed ownership too. Right. Um, and uh, that it that's the route that it continued through 1913. Um, so right. yeah, I mean, you know, we, we we shouldn't stop with just our people. Uh, I I think that it's awfully interesting to note what, uh, where is that? You know, to, to know what did the ship look like that they sailed on? And can you even find perhaps some descriptions of, um, let's say, uh, SS Rotterdam Diary? Uh, mm. Okay. Um, I wonder if you could put like SS Rotterdam captain's log. I wonder if that would be there. Or ship's log. Something like that, yeah. Kind of like the diary of the ship. Right. There's a whole page for the SS Rotterdam. Um, I agree to whatever. Um, but you have to get the, the correct one. Because sometimes the ship will be right. uh, destroyed or whatever, and it goes to Rotterdam, one, two, three, four, right. whatever. So this, is, right. this is definitely the later one. It's not the one that we're interested in. The one that we're interested in got sunk in 1918. Exactly. Yeah, see? Right. Um, so that would be, yeah, that would be worth, uh, you know, Let's see if we can find just the word log and that's the problem is we're going to get anything that says log in or log your entry. Um, so that would need a little bit more tweaking. Right. A little bit more researching. But I found it to be very interesting. It gave a little bigger of a, a a little more of a dimension to my grandmother's okay. um, trip. Right. Gotcha. Abstract of log SS. Gotcha. This is the 18, 1957. And uh, let's see. All right. So that was something that was for sale on on eBay. It doesn't look like, okay. All right, so, um, I mean, there's, 
you know, oh, let you me know, get I never thought of eBay as a source, meaning there could be documents like you just showed yes. for sale that yes. could be helpful in your um, research. You know, there are people that. who actually go to eBay and they set up um, searches for um you can let's see how to set up alert on ebay wow man okay so items that you're interested in they'll set up an alert for photographs with their family name engelbert and they'll that. get an alert whenever or photograph of a location, um, you know, Poughkeepsie, and you'll you'll get an alert whenever something like that is available on on eBay. Um, people do find uh, somebody somebody's aunt dies and she leaves a crate of old sepia tint photographs and the uh, heathen nephew just sells them on ebay or sells well, that's what i was thinking because there's lots of people who really don't care about genealogy they just yeah. see it as dollars and cents right so it could be a gr i never thought of it. it could be a great right. research tool and and there are people who will who will go and they will buy up uh you know pictures of people and try and locate who those people belong to so let's um let's see uh what categories we have so we have pet uh let's go to photos oh pictures of president trump okay we have collectible photos Photo, collectible photograph, Im, photographic images. So here's a vintage album, Women Skiing. Um, that could be, you know, your family, if they happen to be skiing. And this is available for sale. And that would be invaluable to the owner. Somebody, yeah, I mean, um, wow. Yeah, I just, wow. uh, so I, I wonder if each one is different, how much information it provides that might help you. I, I but it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's hit or miss. Um, that would be, that would be something to explore what are people, boy, we're just, you know, we're, we're not going to be doing naturalization today because we're almost, you know, rabbit hole, You're going down the rabbit hole. I know, I know. Um, but, uh, you know, um, rescued family photographs um let's see the rescued photo uh, um so we've got wow uh, man many <laughs> many monday disembodied body okay so she is she is just going in and rescuing photos and posting them. Um, so she found this at an antique shop, a photograph of the lady's auxiliary. And uh, she, found, she found this at an antique shop. She located Mrs. Mary Walters, who according to the address label affixed at the bottom, lived on Fox Avenue in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mary's mother 
is on the far right in the second row. So, you know, there are people who are doing this out there. This one was, was named. So did she actually, and so she's gone through and she's done the whole family history. Without first names, she was unable to identify many of the ladies. Um, I was able to pin down, for those I was able to pin down, she created a Find a Grave album. Wow. Um, memorials for <laughs> these women and attached them to the Find a Grave. And, you know, I am betting if she went to my heritage, she could get a much crisper version of this picture, don't you think, Diane? Yep. I mean, how much, <laughs> how much was you charged, Diane? If you sweet talk me, I would do it for free. <laughs> oh, man. So, and all I did here was I just said rescued. So, there's actually a website called Rescued Photo, uh, Shutter Shock, Family Rescue Images. Put in there, rescued family photographs for Ethel Cotter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You, got, you don't know if you don't try. Probably, you know. Well, that's what I said. It just dawned on me that this could be a, a, a tool. Like you said, it looks hit or miss, but you right. never know. They're going to be valuable to somebody doing genealogy. So, you know, it is, it is pretty, pretty astounding. Um, what, People have way too much time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you become obsessed with something. <laughs> and my obsession is, is talking about genealogy. Her obsession is uh, finding photographs and, and tracing their, their lives. Um, which actually sounds like kind of a lot of fun. God, to you, it sounds like fun. <laughs> well, Ian, wouldn't you be happy if you went to your family search tree one day and you found this photograph that she had put on the uh, gravesite? And you had a photograph. You had a birth. You had a date. And it was like, oh, no, there's my great aunt or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, you would be. And look at that guy with the beard. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yes. And you know, I mean, we have to have hobbies, right? Well, if you if you do like investigating, um, well, the you know, the adoption research is my hobby. I like to investigate. I like to track down and, and solve puzzles. And so that's what all these aspects of genealogy are. This is just a different aspect. It's coming across a photograph and oh, disembodied hand. hand. What? Disembodied hand. Where's disembodied hand? If, oh, right here. Monday. Yeah. Oh, there's nobody. Oh, I thought she. I thought Mini Monday, <laughs> yeah, but but that's the guy next to her. Right, <laughs> right. right. Uh, did yeah, she ever? Man. Okay, so yeah, she she never found the disembodied hand. No, uh, no idea who it is. Um, so I mean, there's every there's all sorts of hobbies out here that you could have, and this is just one of them. Um, there was a woman who also had Russian family named that went by the name of armor and i was hoping there are quite a, there are quite a few armors but not very many very few that's why i'm so intrigued no, that isn't true it. that isn't true i found a whole page somewhere but i don't know where okay let's take a look so let's go to search records and let's do a search of last name armor and let's match it exactly and let's get birthplace russia and how much do we have 
Okay. Billions and billions of records. There are only 91. There she is. Welcome back, Miriam. So just, just for the sake of argument, let us take a look at, just for the sake of comparison, let us take a look at the name Stern, born in Russia. How many records do we Two. have for that? Okay, we have 10,971 records. You're kidding. Whereas for the name <coughs> Armor, we have 91 en toto. And um, so here's a Saul armor that's on the tree. And, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so here's a Saul armor that's on the tree. And this is, okay, so, we have this guy, Saul Armour, who was born in Russia in 1900. He immigrated in 1913, and he's gone to Michigan. Probably not connected to your people, but I am interested in how much they know about this guy. And they have him going back just to his father. And we have a possible duplicate. And this guy is okay, doesn't go back to anybody. So this Saul Armor was researched by Segamore. If we look at his history, um, let's go back and see. So this, this person, Segamore, has researched this guy. I want to know Um, I would want to get in touch with him. And, all right, so we don't have, uh, he's my 11th cousin. Everybody is my 11th cousin. He's your 11th cousin? My 11th cousin. <laughs> yeah. Sigamore? Sigamore. Um, I, would, I would contact him yeah, for the right. simple I'll reason that um say look i am researching oh no family. i don't do that i don't i don't do that i'm i'm not into that stuff the guy thinks i'll probably okay. think i'm a weirdo. i'm going to i'm going to i'm yeah of course he's your that. cousin <laughs> right. your cousin right. not mine okay no but charles right. armor i i found a page with all kinds of charles armors but i don't know where it is <laughs> there's a lot of charles armors from scotland but Where? Charles armor from Russia doesn't exist. Okay, so I am researching. Oh man, uh, the guys. Russian family um, well, surnamed armor uh, in New York and um, Philadelphia. Baltimore? Philly. Philly. And, okay. Philadelphia. Um, and um, suspect that Armour was not their birth name. So I'm contacting 
everyone else who is researching Russians named Armour to see if anyone can give me some insight into how um, you know, how families from Russia came to adopt this name in the US. I don't find it on any uh, Russian documents and on just and only find it handful of individuals in the US. Many thanks for your help. khr home at yahoo.com okay send all right you've got because this is a weird name no ever the meat packer all those i mean there's a lot of, i don't know where i saw it but okay i i but if we go in if we say armor without russia if we just do do a, a search for charles armor let's do a, a search for charles armor we'll just leave Are that as, is that family search this is family search so i'm going to do a search for charles armor and i've got 722 results so let's right. scroll down here and let's narrow down by birthplace. Um, two in Africa, two in Asia, 14 in Canada, six in continental Europe. Let's take a look at these six in continental Europe. Um, that would be, oh look, we've got- That's a, him, that, that's him. That's, that's your, that's yeah. your guy. This is, um, This is the one that you you and I have been working on. Yes. Okay. But here's a here's a Charles Armour living in uh Wisconsin. Um this is uh here's one in in Connecticut. Now this is really old. That, I don't think that's from a birthplace in, that shows a birthplace in, in Connecticut, not a birthplace in Central Europe. Okay, so here they, that's the one we've done. And then this is, this is not Europe. I don't know what, why we got that one. So we were looking only at Okay, here's three from Russia. And those are all your three, Ethel, 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 his wife. And we go back to, let's see, we go back to continental Europe. And- well, well, Why wouldn't you stop there? Okay, so I'm looking now at continental Europe and there are six records. Uh, here's one born in France. This one is actually born in Connecticut, Union, Connecticut. It's just misindexed. And um, then we have Germany and then we have Russia, Russia, Russia. Right. So that is just really weird. Um, let's, let's just look at any armors at all and do an update so we have 343 people with that surname a-r-m-o-u-r and if we go down and filter this you can see um let's filter by any birthplace so let's see by okay 
3,000 in Canada, 15,000 in the UK, 24,000 in the US. Continental Europe, we have 343. Let's take a look there. And now we've got um, Armenia, Austria a bunch, France a bunch, Germany a bunch. They might be worth looking at. But for Russia, we've only got 87. 87 records. We had 91 a minute ago. I don't know and why we, we had only two for Soviet uh, Union. There was something That's else there. Why. Okay. There's the. Okay. So what's the difference? Just curious. I'm actually not sure. I think that this. I think Russia is including these as well. And these are subdivisions. Okay. But what I don't understand is why when we did a search for records and I said, I want armor born in Russia, we got 91 records. And this time when I say I want to see all your armor, okay, this is just telling you that you've got to try searching different ways. So searching with no birthplace specified and then narrowing down the birthplace, we got 87 records but searching with the birthplace restricted, we got four records that we missed otherwise. I can't begin to explain that. Um, but what this is telling me is, you know, that is just really rare. If we, if we go with um, Hector, we have, um, we have five thousand names for Pactor, and of those, the vast majority are born in, or the largest group is born in Europe. So Pactor is definitely a European name, and it's Austrian, Germany, Netherlands, Russian. This is what I'm expecting for a name of a family that emigrated to the United States. I'm expecting to see a bunch of them, a bunch of records for them. And when we look at these records and we narrow them down, um, let's see. So all of these are U.S. records. Um, let's see, can we, not collection type. You're moving a little fast there, young lady. I'm jumping, um, I'm jumping to, uh, my, my question is, can I find records from Russia? that are indexed with the name Pactor. And all of these are US records. All of these are US records. All of these are US and Canada. <coughs> United States to Russia American index. Um, military so the only international record we have is this one probate record from south africa that's interesting you um, lost me you lost me about five minutes ago i don't okay. know so what i'm what i'm doing is i'm using the filters i've done a search broad search for the surname Pactor, right. and I have 5,000, almost 6,000 results. 
And now I'm thinking, what can I learn about the surname Pactor and its frequency as far as, you know, is it, is it commonly, is it a common name in the US? Where is it a common name? And so when I scroll down here and look at the birthplace, I can see how that name is distributed worldwide. And I can see that it's most common for people whose birthplace is listed as um, Europe. Now, of course, some records don't list a birthplace. Um, so, so what will that tell you? Um, Just when that they I, came from Europe? When I then do the same thing with armor, um, I've got 148,000 records with the surname Armor. And when I look at their distribution, um, continental Europe is minuscule. That's telling me that Armor just is not a continental European name. Um, it is definitely an uh, an Anglican Scottish name that's come to the US and Canada. But, but if Eon is saying that his relative came from Russia, wouldn't you start with that continental Europe first? Yes, and the thing that the, the reason that we're getting to this point, Miriam, is that we aren't finding any records for them. Um, especially, we're not finding any records for them in Europe. There are no records at all for the surname Armour in Europe itself. And well, what are those Continental Europe records? What are they? Well, let's take a look at them. So I've, I've said down, I want to see only people who are born in Continental Europe. Now, if we look at the collections, you can see, okay, we do have a civil registration from France, um, but by and large, we have, um, all right, so our, for, this, for the vital records, it's mostly US, we have some from France, our more, I can see, are more, M-O-U-R being a French word. Maybe it's amour and it, you know, I, so I could see that. But you see, all of these are U.S. And when we go down to the censuses, we don't have, okay, we have a Canadian census. We have the English census. No, it's no surprise that we've got mostly U.S. censuses because that's where family search is strongest. When we're looking- Does every, does every country do a census? Um, some more than others. Censuses are done in order to tax. And so generally countries do censuses. They wanna know not only how uh, for taxing, but they wanna know how many able-bodied people they have to fight. So there are reasons why countries want to do censuses. Whether the censuses are preserved, subsequently filmed, subsequently digitized and put online. We talk about the spelling of the last name a lot. And as we have experienced the spelling over there, the spelling over here, um, east is east, west is west, and never the twain shall meet, sort of. So, Eon, the spelling of armor is, to your knowledge, is that how it was spelt in Europe? You know, going well, that, down. That's the question line. that K, K is the one that's questioning. You don't find I don't... a single instance of um, 
aside from let's take a look at this at this uh, armor armor certainly isn't Russian it would be Armorovich or yeah or something like that but so I don't and that's that's our problem is we're trying to think what did they what was their name now here we have this French record and uh Okay, it's courtesy of some very nice people, but I don't, what, uh, I want to see less, I want to see nothing. Okay, so this is, um, I'm not gonna try and search, through, but I am betting that, that even this, is not correct because there are so few instances of that name. Well, we've got uh, 48 results possible. It still seems like a very rare uh, name. Okay, now we're getting into armor, A-R-M-E-R. -E so really, they're only giving us one, two, three, four, five, six names with that A-R-M-O-U-R spelling, seven. So that just, you know, did you, did, you know, the family could not have all died out except for the handful of people that are, you know, that are left. So there's got to be some different name that they were known by. And that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, when we go to the catalog and we look at uh, the place, Russia, and we want to see um, what records we can look for. Um, Let's see, what do we got? Do we have any uh, census 1897? Uh, okay. All right. So here's the other problem we run into. Um, I can't read that. Let's see if we, Google will translate it. All right, um, so Google is translating this for us. We're looking at the census for Yalotorovsk County. And if we look, these are not indexed. Um, I think that's, that's showing us part of our difficulty in finding records. is wow, yeah i know it says more over here <laughs> i don't think I don't know what that means. yeah yeah well, at least it's written in roman letters <laughs> yeah so um what we want are we want to find a man i'm getting you, you give me a headache with all this switching around here okay it's just now what i what i want to do is i want to see if i can find a collection of russian records that is searchable online and so i'm going back to the catalog and looking for any, any that are online, and let's do an update. So this is only going to show me out of the family history catalog, it's only showing me records that are online, but it, it's not telling me if they have been digitized. So I think that I have to go in and look at these records to 
Um, so let's see here we've got a kirk. So this is going to be a church. And these are not digitized. So, you know, the reason we may not be finding them when we court minute books, these are not digitized. So it is possible that we're not finding them because they are not, um, have not been digitized. And maybe there's a whole bunch of armors in Russia that I don't know about. But no, I still argue that armor cannot be the, the name of, uh, of them in Russia, because if that were the case, we would find a lot more people with the name armor showing up in this um, Russians coming to America. And so let's, li let's take what Miriam was getting at, where instead of restricting it, let's leave it as very open. And let's even add an, ex uh, an asterisk to the end to give us Really? Maybe Armovich or Morovich or whatever. Let's see. Something that begins with something that sounds like armor and yeah. ends no. And we're looking yeah. at only Russians who came to America. And uh, we did use a last name. So let's try it with armor. Okay, so you see, it doesn't like that name. It doesn't have Charles at all. It has so a J. Why don't you do ARM with an asterisk? Just well, for it doesn't the like three the letters. Asterisk. Nope. It, it, okay. So we've got some um, Armovitz, maybe, maybe. We've got 134. Uh, Armonitis, Armonazi, Armbod. Um, I'll have to play with it. What is the what is the Charles version of? Uh, what is the Russian version of Charles? Are you kidding me? Okay, Russian. Oh. of Charles. Okay. Carl. Okay. Oh. All right. So. They even spell it in Cyrillic or whatever. Right. right. Um, so. Let's see if we get a Carl armor. Oh, that's the wrong one. Carl here. Okay, so no Carl's. Um, The C. Armovitz. You know what I would do? No. I would, it. I would. I would take this Armovitz. And write him a letter. Yeah, you like to do that. I'm not no. writing any. I'm going to go to the tree and I'm going to create a profile for him. Yeah, for you. And all I know about him is the name C. Armovitz. 
All right. And so I'm going to create this profile. It's female. Yeah. That's fine. That's that's fine. I'm gonna whoops. Cancel that. I'm going to put female and deceased and next. And um, I'm going to copy her ID. And then I'm going to go to the C arm of it and review and attach it. and paste that select it and so now i'm going to add her birth and her immigration and save it and now i would i would research her um you know maybe maybe um she is so I'm going to put her on my watch list so that I can research her in a minute. So here we've got this C. Armovitz. Let's go to her and, um, and let's just see if we can find anything. We know that she was in New York. We've got her in the C. Armovitz, 1846. All right, so now we have her in the passenger manifest. We have an image of the passenger manifest. Let's take a look at that. This is what was used to create that index. So let's see if there's any other hints here. Um, Bullar, Liller, Olson, Larson, Reed. Okay, so we have C. Armovitz. Oh, look. So she's a housewife and she's traveling with a child who is six named R. We have a, what do you think that says? J. Oh, that R comes down, so that's yeah. The R comes down. J Joey, J O I E. I don't know. J O U E. Wow. It's a male. Well, if, if if she named one of her kids R, well, she wasn't very she wasn't very bright. And we do have a, a Sarah, so we've got a. Uh, so Jay's R and something. Sarah, R and Sarah, are the same age, or what's that other? No, is that Sarah is six team? months old. Oh my goodness! R is six years old, and they're a housewife. So she's probably traveling to join her husband. So let's save this for a minute. I'm going to oh, do. Oh man, you're, you know what? You're. Molly, no puedo para mí. We just. We Went ram down our another rabbit. In the ground, we tie a piece of string, and we go chasing off into the maze. Um, yes. Okay. So she immigrated in 1881. Um, all right, we've got that. Now we've got, um, we're going to go to her person. And um, we're going to add her children. We're going to add our <laughs> arm of it. And that was a who knows female, six years old. Oh man. Um, likely deceased. We're going to add a J, because I can't read the J, what J's name was. J something something E. 
And that's a male. And we're going to deceased him. And we're going to add the Sarah. And I am going to actually put her age in because it's in months. She was six months old in August. So she was born in around February. So I will say she was born around February. Eighteen eighty-one, and we'll say she was born in Russia. And we're going to pick. Okay, she was born in the Russian Empire. All right, and she is deceased. They really think somebody is going to be one hundred forty years old. Okay, all right. So I've got these people. Now I'm going to Are you copy. Okay, how did you know this was the same person? It isn't. She doesn't know. She's, she's guessing. What have we okay, got? so it's a shot in the dark. Yeah. Okay, we started okay. with we started with this um, entry in right. the U.S. Uh, to Russians index for somebody who was born in 1846 and who immigrated on 1 September 1881. And then I did a search for that person and came up with the, okay, so this is the person in the index. And then I did a search for the person, C. Armovitz, born in Russia, and I had seven results. This entry in the Russians to America index, you can see is based on this passenger manifest. So this Russian to American index, what they did in order to create this index is they looked at all the ship manifests and they looked at naturalization records and they used whatever facts they had available. And in this case, the only facts they had available was this. We have this passenger manifest that names a C. Armovitz or Arwowitz, Armovitz, age 35 in 1881. So 1881 minus 35 gave us that birth year of 1846. And she states here, everybody here is born in Okay, everybody from here to here was born in Norway. Everybody from here down is born in Russia. So that's how we get the Russia. The immigration date comes from the date of the ship's manifest. And if we go and look at this, uh, we're looking for the beginning. Okay. Uh, okay, 31 August, 1881. And that looks like the beginning, people, people, people. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We, we were at this one. That's people, 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 people. This is the beginning. Okay, so this is where that September 1st, 1881 date came. So you see all of the entries in this Russians to America index for this particular person, that she's a housewife, the name of the ship, 
her estimated birth year, where she departed from, all of that information is pulled from this entry. Do you see? Yeah, I see. Thank so you. Now I have used this entry to create this family grouping. C. Armovitz, R. Ditto, Armovitz, Joey, Ditto, Armovitz, and Sarah, Ditto, Armovitz. So I'm creating all of them, and I have put them, if I can find where I've put them. So I have put them all in family search. So now I'm going to go individually and I'm going to add that manifest to each of them. So I'm gonna copy Sarah's ID. I'm gonna go back to the manifest and I'm going to go down here to the image index and look for Sarah. Here he is. Sarah, I'll click on Sarah. And now I'm going to attach the record to Sarah. So it says pick the Sarah or enter her number. I'll enter her number that I saved and select her. So Sarah, um, born about February 1881. I did that based on August minus six, so she immigrated here, and we've saved that. Now I'm going to go back to the record, and I want to go back to the image. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna choose, oh, they think it's Isaac. I think it might be Isaac too. What do you guys think? I don't think it's, I might be Isaac. Thoughts? I don't know, that looks like a J. Looks like a J, let's see if we find any J's. Well, you may be right because if you went down a little bit further, it looked like there was an, I-S-K-E-L. Yeah. 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 So it could be Isaac. And there's a J. That's definitely a much longer J than hmm, might be. Well, it, I would do some searching through and see if I could find some I's. See if I could find another instance. Yeah, or, because it, it looks like a J. Yeah. Yes, but why are you tracing her? What do you well, think? I'm tracing her on the slim possibility that she might be connected to your armors and that your, your armors were armavits and that they change their name. So I am desperate. So I will go through and add the rest of them, but then I'm going to go, well, actually I want to add, um, let's add Isaac. Okay. And I'm going to copy that. Um, the reason I'm choosing Isaac and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leap to the conclusion that they're correct, is that he's a male. And so he's gonna stay Isaac, I hope, for the rest of his life. Uh, he's gonna stay Isaac arm something for the rest of his life. So he's born around 1876. He immigrated around 1881. And let's go to him. Let's just edit him for the moment as 
Isaac. That is a that is a reasonable name. Um, from Passenger Manifest looks like that, or possibly Isaac. So I'm giving my my explanation. I covered my tail there. So now I have a guy, um, Isaac, born in 1876, living in Russia. He immigrated to the United States in um, 1881. In um, 1900, he would be probably married. Let's see if we find an Isaac Armovitz. Um, we've got him in the index. Yeah, we don't find any Isaac. Okay. Let's look for Sarah. No luck with Isaac. Let's try Sarah. Um, family search. And nope, they don't even have the one that we found. Um, hmm. Okay, let's go back and see if we can find any arm of it in New York at all. Oh. But see, yeah, I do this kind of stuff because I'm, I'm, not finding armor. So um, do we find any arm of it? Um, that begins with a C. But look, here we've got an Isaac in, I wonder why that did not show up when we did our search for Isaac. Isaac Armowitz, and he's got a daughter born in 1896, or no. He's got a daughter who died in 1896. Well, that can't be our Isaac. Um, because our Isaac was only six years old. Um, so I'm just looking to see, do I have any No. Okay, so, so we have drawn yet another dead end, um, which is why I am so keen on the idea of finding anybody who has an armor that is from Russia, and contacting them, sorry. And I would do this on family search and go through and look for anybody who's in a tree. That's your Ethel, we don't care about her. Um, there is somebody, we'll, we've tried him already. Well, and I would we'll also, see somebody. Well, we, we had, uh, this um, Grand Rapids that we had already looked for him, looked at him. And I think that's who I emailed. And I'm also going to go to Ancestry and I'm gonna do the same, the same search um, for, uh, what I'm gonna try here is I'm gonna go to Public Member Trees and I am going to look for the last name Armor, and I'm going to go for it exact, and I'm gonna go for born in Russia, and I'm going exact, and I'm gonna see, do we have any family trees with people with that name? So we've got um, 30 results, and 
Interesting here. We have Armor Amrovitz. So it's giving me one possibility. Maybe, maybe Charles was an Amrovitz. Um, we've got another Amrovitz. Um, Paul Armour from... But I thought that I had specified that I wanted only born in Russia. Okay. It might... Um, so, you know, I'm going to go to these people. And... I am going to say, okay, this is interesting. We've got the, um, from Michigan. I think I've actually, I've already written to her. Um, let me see if I've got. I thought that I had sent a message to Ruth Armour's people. But that's neither here nor there. So, yes, at this stage, we are, we are really looking for help. So that Amrovitz and Armovitz is, uh, Amrovitz is looking real interesting. I might try that in your search and then Oh, look, we've got Charles and Ethel in four trees. It's her daughter. Wait a minute, Lily. They have a daughter, Lily. Do you know the Grant McLagan family tree? No. Got two, 22,000 people in his tree. Okay. Nancy Lily. Grant? No, Lily. She last signed in yesterday. So um, anyhow, she's, she's researching your family. How um, do you know? Well, because she has in her tree, she has Charles and Ethel with Lily, Jenny, Benjamin. That's it. That's my family. But that's your family. And that's in her in Grant McLagan family tree by this Nancy Grant. So, um, so there what's are what's that twenty two what's that twenty two thousand two hundred and sixty five people mean? That's her tree, the Grant McLagan family tree. So it it's it may be Oh the look, there's the stern Lily Armour from the oh that's me. Right, Lily Armour. Right. And then the next one is you, and then is do you know the Bassic McGish tree? Are Mac you kidding? No. Do they know me? <laughs> So they don't know you, but they know Lily. And so here we've got uh, an unknown spouse, Irene Bassick. Um, Holy she mackerel. hasn't signed in in a long time. Um, and uh, God, I don't know how you uh, find all these things. You, I'm you Bender, what to do. I'm Bender. I'm Bender Socket and Solomon is is uh, Socket is uh, was my my grandmother's sister's husband. And her, export for Gramps. I am betting export from Gramps is is one of your kids. One, one of one my of, kids. One of your grandchildren. One of my grandchildren. Right. No. No, no, I'll bet you. I'll bet you a hundred dollars. Okay, so let's contact tree. Somebody okay. else's. Um, milkweed o one three o. Oh, milkweed! You know who that is? That's some guy. Milkweed is. Uh, he works at the. He used to work at the Gulf Breeze Library or something, and he's uh, he's a librarian who does. Which of a call it does genealogy, but he's ah. he just adds people to trees. I okay. he's he, okay. he's not too reliable. All right, so we've got we've got those people are the people who are doing your your family, but we have all other people who are not doing your family. 
and I'm looking at the names that they are finding, and that name Amrovitz is yeah. is coming up as a possibility. And so I, you know, I think it would be worth checking with them. Are they? Um, have they run into any lines of their family that immigrated to New York? That well, stayed in New York. Um, well, this guy, Charles Armour, says that uh, I think he immigrated in 1878 to to New York. Uh, right. That's what he said, but. And so I'm looking at here's this Isaac. Let's see what uh, this Isaac Warsaw Armour, born in 1902 in Russia. And um, just looking at his family trees to get a sense of what people know about his family. Um, we don't have a lot of people who've done much research on them, but they, he did go with the name Amrov Amrovitz and Armour. Nobody's got any records. Um, let's see. We've got Noah Amrovitz and Esther. This one looks more researched. Looks like this is the same family, but more researched. Let's take a look at them so ken yes in doing logic you would yeah. would you take a look at the family tree on the amrovitz to see how far back they go and then go back to family search and do a search on the amrovitz name to see what that pulls up and well, then contact them i would do that but i would also contact carolina lady and say, look, I am researching. He signed in today. And say, you know, Ian, have you taken a DNA test? No. I think you ought to take a DNA test. I know that, but I don't want to take one. Okay. I don't believe in that. Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, this um this. Carolina lady is researching people from Russia who adopted the name Armour in the U.S. And what does she know about them? If we look at uh, Annie, so she's got them going back a couple of generations. She's got them going back to Gersh. Um, and to Noah, all she's got is trees, but for Noah, so Noah apparently came to the US. Um, they got married in Mexico, okay. Um, she hasn't found any arrival records for him. But, you know, I, I would write to her and say, you know, do you know, in your research, have you come across any families? Well, let's, let's do it here and say, um, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, we want to know this. So it's like, okay, so our, my message is, um, Armor, um, well, let's, uh, they don't have a title. No, they don't. Okay. Um, oh. I am researching armors from Russia who settled in the U.S. In um, Philadelphia. Oh, and who well. settled in New York. Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. okay. But we also have some records that say that the kids were born in Brooklyn. 
Right. Um, and uh, he supposedly arrived that. in 1878. Okay. I can give you all the information on him, but that, him you know, who um, that lady's going to think you're crazy from Russia. We have 10 minutes in um, 18. Thank goodness. In the late. Uh, in the late 19th century oh. and who settled in New York and Philadelphia. I see that you have Russian ancestors who took the name Armour as well and wonder if you have come across any connections to uh, relations who stayed on the East Coast. And I'm, even though I'm using that. So thank God you put your name down. I wouldn't. <laughs> right. Carolina lady. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> So, yeah, put Miriam's name or yours. Or, or Diane is, isn't with us. Put Diane's name. Right. What's it doesn't cost us a dime. All right. Right. Um, Pat, as you can see, has 30 messages that she has never looked at. Who? Uh, Pat, because I'm using Pat's um oh. Yeah. Oh. Sneak God. <laughs> That's um, probably better than Diane. We actually need to get through this because I, I can see that we've got some messages from people that that um, we need to get back to. Yes, but you know, we live in the era of collaborative research. You have oh. all of this, and yes, go back and do a search on on um, family search if we can find it for. Uh, Abramovich. Abramovich. For uh, any passenger records for Armovitz into um, born in Russia and with any other place as Philadelphia. All right. You know. Okay, so we have this guy. You know what I'm going to do with him? Send him a letter. I am going to create a profile for him. Oh, man. Search him. And, uh, and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, what about any place like New York? Because I think your people came into New York. Yeah. Okay. We don't have any um, arm of it's coming to New York. Um, let's try Armo. Now, this is going to force, it should force A to be the first initial. Does it? Armoire. Now that's interesting. Um, and let's see if we've got any. We still, okay, let's see. We've got some passenger crew and lists. So I would look at all of these people, whether they are your people or not and see what they say about their, um, you know, so this hairy armor. And, you know, what do they say? Are you there? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna oh. lose you in seconds. Oh no, we have five minutes left. Um, you know, you're at the stage of you're trying to figure out, okay, so he's, Harry Armour, uh, Brown, uh, Lucania, um, 
can we find him with an earlier name? Can we find him? We know, we know that he arrived in New York on or about the 15th day of July, 1906. Can I find, uh, and he arrived on the vessel Lucania. Do you see that Nicholas II, emperor of all the Russias? Yes. Isn't that cool? Yes. And he didn't Sorry. live long, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he, this, this man may not be at all related to your people, but there may be a pattern of people with a certain surname adopting this surname Armour. And so if you can find out what his surname was in, in Russia, it may help you find your, because ultimately you're trying to find a passenger manifest for a Carl. Um, let's see. So we're looking for a Carl uh, Armovitz, what the heck? Carl Arms something, born in Russia, and uh, something to New York. And we are down to three minutes. Can we find no results for Carl in New York? What if you did C-A-R-L? Does that make a difference? It shouldn't, but let's not assume no. no. Okay. Um, so let's... Let's just get rid of um, any location. Oh, come on. You're not finding any Carl at all? Okay. So it's, it's, um, yeah, so you want to, okay. You want to think um, you're going to go to your family tree and you were going to go and look at um charles and um rebecca was his daughter she was born in the u.s um but we think we think that he we think that he, uh, oh jenny jenny was born in russia so what is the, you know, what is Jenny, Russian? Well, I don't know whether she was born in Russia or not. This guy, I, the, the information that I have was <clears throat> he came over in 1878 and he got married in, no, he came over in, eight, he, he got married in 1879, so he must have been married in the States. But Jenny was born in 1880. Right, so we're not sure if he was born in. I, I think in the in the minute we have left, you uh, you have two routes to explore. One is to talk to other people who have families with that surname Armor in the U.S. and learn what they have found about those families back in Russia. And two is to use those surnames Armovitz, Armowitz, A-R-M asterisk, and look for everybody that we can find that has uh, naturalized in the US. So um, that's one possibility. Or has um, gone to the United States. So look at the passenger manifests as well. And we find them. All right. So there you have it. Look at the New York City passenger crew lists and see what you can find.